Hi. Two diverse fighting games on DOS were quite often a hit and a miss. On one hand, you had amazing ports like Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, which were basically arcade perfect, and on another, we've got Rise of the Robots, which was all bark and no bite, promising mountains and delivering valleys. Oh well, these were the top tier games though, let's see what B-listers were worth a look over the 10 years platform was flourishing for. HKM is a rather early versus fighter, and yes, I'm avoiding saying the entire title for YouTube reasons. Such are the types we live in. Unlike nearly all the rest of the pack that we'll get to talk about here today, it does not feature a two-player mode and only offers a single-player campaign. Still, as a 1988 release, it's surprisingly interesting and well done. You're Quan, and you're the titular HKM, a true badass and a master fighter. You've like five or six black belts, one that's rainbow colored and one made of leather to hold your pants in place. And muscles. Yep, you've got those two and they're big. So big in fact, that no regular sized shirt fits you, so you spend most of your time running around topless, sporting a spotless white and era appropriate headband. Those muscles however are not just for show, and you like the deadliest of the deadliest hand to hand fighters. At least that's what you claim. And since no one knows that though, and you're as insecure as they come, seeking a constant validation of anyone and everyone, you want to, nay, you have to show everyone that you're the best fighter out there. So, you embark on a stupid ass quest of your own making, to travel around the world and beat the living shit out of the best martial artists around it. But being an average Joe, or average Quan in this particular case, you'll be visiting many different locales, showing off your prowess by beating up random people. So, you'll beat up a Russian soldier, you'll set two ladies straight, you'll down a bullfighter, well, bull for that matter too, cause, you know, why not go for the two birds, so to speak. You'll punch the life out of Oktoberfest German beer trader, you'll mow a French waiter, and definitely not for pretending not to be able to speak English, you'll chase and defeat Arabic ninja, and finally, Dwayne Johnson type of a mountain of muscles as the final boss. Oh, there's dog there mixed in too, cause it was 80s and no one cared. Pretty interesting cast of victims, don't you think? Still, if you play your cards right, or actually make sure to have your punches and kicks lined, you'll be committing successful hate crimes all around the world. The moves you have at your disposal may not be in dozens, but there's few decent ones, and for 1988 EGA fighter, HKM is a rather decent, even if not a good game. The graphics are, well, interesting, and while not mind-blowing or state-of-the-art for the graphical chipset, they're hardly something to pick on. And the sounds? Well, let's leave the sounds at peace, they're not something worth mentioning or omnipresent, only ever audible sometimes with PC speakers signature beeps and bobs. Tong of the Fat Man, aka Fat Man, aka Mondus Fight Palace, aka Slaughter Sport, is a game with more titles than it needed, and as weird as all of them sound. Anyway, it's a late 80s versus fighting game with a gimmick. Said gimmick being the fact that you choose not between the specific named characters, but between the racers. So there's humanoids, cyber droids, cryoplasts, amazoid, bee huskers, razors, mammoths, Paftians, celluloids, and lastly, colonoids. Origin of that last species name is not something that I'd ever want to learn. Though I have my dark suspicions, which I'm convinced are entirely different to their origin included in the game. I'd rather let your imagination wander though than explain it, or better yet, let your mind erase any note of the name altogether. Each of the races has their own 15 basic unique moves and one special, and all play a little different. You start with only three of them to choose from, but as you progress through the game, defeating other, they will be unlocked to be picked for the future encounters. The final boss is a teacher of Atman named Nondu, and yep, he is a bit on a heavier side. It's not his fault though. He's big bone, that's all. And his special ability is the so-called tongue lash, where his belly opens up as if an alien was about to jump out of it and sprawls a tongue tweak that jabs the enemy. So, you. Despite him being the last character you play against in single player campaign, he's not as hard to put down as some of the earlier ones can be. So yeah, that's 80s game design and balancing at its finest. I shouldn't complain though really as the game supports VGA and looks really nice for the year it released in, and even if the presentation's not everything, it's definitely better than I expected. There are 24 different items in the game and they can be purchased between the matches, for money earned fighting or for betting on the fights, and up to 4 of these can be taken into the ring. Each of them is a singular use only perhaps, but they can easily make or break the game. Tonk of the Fat Man features 3 bars for each player, one for health, one for crowd favor, and the most important one, the red, for those noobs like myself who try to complete fighting games with just one or two moves. In short, if you try to spam the same technique, its effectiveness will decrease, and at some point the attack will just do a tiny fraction of its original damage. 
so you have to mix them up and not rely on just a couple of attacks only. You can lose up to 3 times, which will cost you $100 to revive, but after this you can lose up to 3 times. Each of them will cost you $100 to revive, but after the third loss, that's it and you're down forever. Tongue of the Fat Man is easily one of the weirdest versus fighting games I've ever seen and definitely a title fans of the genre should play at least once. No exit is trash. Wow, what a start. But it kinda is, I'm afraid. It's a single and multiplayer versus fighting game and one of the most bizarre titles we'll talk about today. It's also one of those very early, at least in its design philosophy titles, like International Karate, that lacks variety in attack moves and serves a very basic but decently looking gameplay with an interesting premise. So, graphically, it's a rather nice even if not impressive looking fighter, failing at nearly everything else. So you're this generic looking green haired dude who's taking part in series of fights with near identically looking other generic dudes. Which raises a series of questions, is that some kind of a fashion trend of the future, the green pants, bare chest and all, or are they just clones of one another, all collectively deciding on wearing the same kind of trousers and no tops? The questions may be out there, but answers aren't. So it's always you against your near lookalike and you're fighting it out using same boring ass attacks. Even more so, as you can clearly see, I can only make one. That said, there's a couple of things that make no exit at least worth a try, if not a playthrough. And it's the ability to customize your character's balance of stats trading off efficiency against vivacity and resistance against strength, which while not much, allows you to preset your character to more suit your playstyle. So if you get hit often, invest in resistance, but if you're the one hitting strong, go for strength. The second unique feature is the so-called destructive mode, which you can enable up to three times and it transforms your fighter into a monster or drastically different person depends on the degree of particular transformation and in that form you're not only hitting like a truck but also are more resistant and it's easier for you to topple your opponent. It's an interesting mechanic, one that as far as I noticed the opposing fighter has no access to. When used at the right time, it may be a decisive factor in a particular battle. Beyond all this, there's nothing special or interesting about no exit, the moves are rather limited in range of choices, not very flashy or explosive, and you don't feel the weight behind them. The graphics don't woo with anything either being just okay, and animations are pretty choppy. It's a game to have a go at once, with a friend for shits and giggles, and then forget about forever. Choose an enemy is not only oddly named versus fighter, but also the weirdest game in the entire video. It's a first-person perspective fighter and the second single-player on the game we'll talk about today. It features terribly digitized graphics for backgrounds, fighters and, well, your girlfriend, all three of them, but you know what, let me highlight game's story here, cause it's short and stupid, just the way I like them. Someone attacks your girlfriend and you, being the good boyfriend that you are, have to protect her. That's it. Yep, deep stuff, eh? Anyway, get that. You get to pick who attacks your girlfriend. There's three enemies in the game, differing in their difficulty, technique, power, background scenery, looks and their hilarious stories, and you choose which of them will be the one going for her. Odd. Or a master plan to secure her love forever. We'll never know. Still, the enemies are Ivan Zubrovka, who according to his background is not very fast, takes two of your teeth with each of his successful attacks and is always under the influence of at least an entire bottle of vodka, which must have been the genesis for his nickname and skill. Or lack thereof. Then there's the Pupula Bamba, who I must add looks as if he was suffering from a constant constipation. You know, he has that Max Payne look on his face. He's pretty fast and attacks a lot, but only takes one teeth when his hits land. Also, he's apparently an avid weed user, so there's that too. And finally, the star of the show, Fritz Ditz. I swear those names are something else. Ever since he was a kid, he wanted to be the king of the street. And yes, you heard that right, singular. Perhaps it's the Sesame Street that he was on about, or perhaps some other. It's a secret game devs will take to their graves. He punches out two of your teeth with each attack and doesn't drink or do drugs, so he changes his tactics constantly and is the fastest one of them all. Interesting cast of fighters, don't you think? What is the deal with all those teeth I keep mentioning, you may wonder? Well, the HP for you and your opponent is presented as a set of upper and lower teeth, and each successful hit takes few away. The fight ends either when all of the teeth of one of the fighters are gone, and so are the years of him eating solid foods, or when the time runs out, and then the number of leftover mowers decides the winner. There's only three moves in choose an enemy, and that's to launch the game, to ignore the game, or to uninstall the game. No, wait, these are not the droids that I'm looking for. I mean, moves that I'm looking for. 
and there are left hit, right hit and a setback to avoid getting hit yourself. And using all these, you have to put down all three rather unusual gentlemen. The playability of chosen enemy is questionable, let alone replayability of it. But it's worth experiencing at least once to see how a terrible version of TKO or Punch-Out with digitized graphics would look like. Yeah! In the year 2073, New York is a dark, rundown and dangerous city. It is roamed by the deadly, genetically engineered mutant monsters escapees from the AMX Corp Labs where they were experimented on. Now, bent on killing anyone and destroying anything in their way, in revenge for pain, suffering and disfigurement that they suffered, they roam the city causing mayhem. The police and army are powerless to stop them, so it is decided that the champion is needed to stand against them. A fighter, likes of which we've not seen before and one capable to saving the city and its citizens. So, a tournament is arranged and the strongest fighters from around the world gain, seeking fame, glory and money. And the winner will also find honor as being our last chance, our violent fighter against the evil. That whole segment was supposed to be read in a movie-like voice, you know, like in the trailers, but I failed at it so many times. I mean, I just gave up. Anyway, as versus fighting games stories go, this one's pretty bad. I mean, so bad that it's good bad, but bad nonetheless. It's also just a story, and if I haven't told it to you, you'd not waste a second seeking it out and would just launch the game. And you know what? Good. Because that's what we're here for anyway. Violent Fighter features 8 unique combatants from around the world, each of them looking differently, representing their own martial arts techniques and sporting few unique attacks. So there's Keter, yes, as in Peter but with a key, like for the door, instead of P, and he's an American boxer. Liz, from Undisclosed Country in Asia, is a master of also undisclosed martial arts and she wants to open a grocery store with her prize money. Dream big, girl, dream big. Then there's Ali from Asia and he wants to donate the money to the poor kids in his country so that they could get the education that they desperately need. And we kinda hope that he'll win. And survive. Both. Heights, as in plural from height, is the Australian name and he drugs himself with mysterious quote-unquote vitamins and acts like an animal. Nobody knows why. Cyber 2 is a cyborg made by Professor Eaton and he's two, so there had to be one at some point and the professor wants to spend the money on the Model 3, so yeah, it all checks out science funding. Homa, an alien who crash landed on Earth, a powerful being that plans to spend the money on a spaceship. Now, little does he know that we can't make those, not even in the game's lore, but whatever. Killer C from South America, and yes, C as in large body of water, is an amphibious creature fighting with his tongue and tail mainly. And finally, purple cyborg named Clyde, product of AMX Corp, he's made by the same company that's responsible for the monsters, so there's no money on the line for him. Pretty colorful cast, don't you think? And I just noticed I've asked the very same question third time in a row. Hmm, I'm repeating myself, that's um, problematic. Anyway, so the game sees you fighting all seven other fighters, then the one that you've chosen, and then the monsters that serve as the bosses, so to speak. And they're the Fire King, Kaleimus, and Mega Claw. Sadly, as fun as all those sound, Violent Fighter is not a great game. And it feels like a cheap take on the Street Fighter too. And plays kinda like it too. It's not as bad as couple others we've spoke about today already, but it's definitely not a title that will be in your permanent rotation. It's a good game to jump in from time to time if you're bored, but would be much more playable if it could be enjoyed against a friend too. Sango Fighter is a versus fighting game set in China in the Three Kingdoms era with characters loosely based on the romance of the Three Kingdoms novel. Towards the end of the Han Dynasty, China was controlled by the Emperor Ling, who was in turn influenced by ten of his quote-unquote servants in the royal palace. The situation was a perfect breeding ground for crime and corruption to spread around the country. Seeing what took place in the country, the Emperor ordered ten dukes to take it on themselves to restore the peace in the land. Instead, they got involved in infighting in hopes of taking the power over the entire country for themselves. Eventually, Duke Cao Cao came on top, took the Emperor captive and became de facto leader of China. As fighting game stories go, this one's not that bad, even if largely unnecessary. You can play Sango Fighter as either one versus one type of a game or in a story mode. First is self-explanatory and will see you either trying your skills against the CPU in singular bouts or a soon-to-be ex-friend showing him or her your superiority in competitive games. Or if you're of a similar skill to me, showing them another game that they can whoop your ass in. Story mode sees you taking five fighters against Cao Cao's forces in series of fights, all to overthrow the evil duke and restore the land to its former glory. 
Sadly, you have no choice on whom to choose. I mean, I get that, there's a low reason for it, as they're all fighters under Liu Bei's wing, fighting for him against Cao Cao, but a little more freedom would be appreciated. There are 12 characters that you can play as in the versus mode and they are all uniquely looking and representing their own signature styles of combat. They look great too, drawn in huge and detailed sprites that are animated as smoothly as Ryan Reynolds as Jin goes down, or so I heard, and are a pleasure to watch in motion. Sango's Fighter's presentation is breathtaking for 1993 on PC, it's definitely above the standard and even more so above what was expected from a B-lister. It shines all the way through, utilizing lush and detailed backgrounds, huge sprites and appropriate sound design for all the kicks, punches and special attacks. Sango Fighter is excellent and if you're a fan of the genre you should not skip it. Even if it released in the same year that Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat dropped on PC, so I was pretty much dead on arrival. 1989 gave us one of those sci-fi movies that were so bad that they ended up being pretty damn good. Robot Jogs, a futuristic story of East vs West in which there are no regular wars anymore and all the conflicts between both blocks are solved with use of giant mechs operated by pilots, the titular Robot Jogs. And 1994 gave us What Must Fall 2097, a versus fighting video game that's not officially based on the movie but kinda looks like it. With a slight but fundamental difference, OMF 2097 is not so bad that it's good, it's just straight up great and incredibly innovative. So much so that there's no similar game on the market to this very day and it doesn't look like we're ever going to get one. Anyway, what's so special about it you may wonder? Well, wonder no more. It's a mech fighting game taking place in ginormous cage like arenas and the twist is that you can not only pick one of the 10 different mechs to play as but also one of 10 entirely unique pilots that sit in them and control them as an extension of their own bodies. So the recipe for success is to pick the best combo, the best duo of both that would complement each other and come on top of each and every fight. And since OMF 2097 is so well balanced, the best choice is very situational and depends on the challenge ahead of you. Both pilots and robots can be improved between the fights, role-playing style and despite it sounding from my dry description here like an unnecessary addition, a gimmick even, it's actually incredibly well thought out and executed mechanic that adds a lot to the fun factor. And the main reason why I'm so surprised that OMF 2097 was not more popular and didn't become a household name. I mean, sure, it has a near fanatical like cult following within the ranks of those gamers who had a chance to play it in 1994, but sadly, that's still a tiny subset of all potential players that it could have grabbed. All arenas present in the game short of one feature hazards that can damage the mechs if you're not careful, and even potentially decide on which side will become victorious. And these dangers are plenty and different. So stuff like suddenly popping out spikes, jet plane attacks or electricity jolts are nothing out of ordinary. Each of the mechs have their own set of basic moves, 3 or 4 special attacks that deal extra damage and are appropriately creative and flashy. And 2 finishers of scrap and destruction, you know, equivalents of fatalities from Mortal Kombat. There are two gameplay modes in OMF 2097, one player and tournament, and both have a story. First puts you in the shoes of an employee of war, so world aeronautics and robotics, taking part in their intercompany competition to decide who will be selected to oversee the establishment of the first Earth base on Jupiter's moon Ganymede. In second, in a grim version of our future, mech combat has become the prime and most popular entertainment on Earth and you're the new competitor that must fight for the prize money and improve your mech as you go up in the standings to eventually become the world champion. If you enjoy fighting games and never played One Must Fall 2097, I can pretty much guarantee that it's one of the most original and unusual games that you've ever laid your paws on. Upon its release and promotional period, Savage Warriors advertised its novel at the time technology called 3D Biomotion. It seemingly simulated 3D bones and joints on characters covered in 2D sprites, effectively making them appear 3D-ish. While they may not be real 3D, they appear so and it's a nice change from all the other 2D versus fighters that were available on the market back then. It's an interesting idea and technology, even if one that was nowhere near enough to rescue savage warriors from trailing on the path of mediocrity. The elusive mythical being known only as the Master brings in 10 great warriors torn out of their own times to pit them against each other to see who's the best and worthy of challenging the Master himself. So, you'll be able to pick between the likes of Nephis born in Egypt more than 3000 years ago, Fergus, who's an Irish warrior from the 10th century, and World War II veteran Hank from USA, to name a few. 
Each of the warriors is unique and not only in how it looks, but in a style it fights in and special moves too. Other than the master who's the final boss of the game and your ultimate challenge and the other 9 fighters, there's also 5 secret characters that you may get to fight against at certain points in the story, but they're not playable themselves. Interestingly enough, few of the stages that you fight on allow for grabbing off and hanging from things like a tree branch, hooks or other similar things, all to deliver attacks from the above. And as much as it's an interesting novelty, its use case scenarios are rather limited, if not straight up non-existent. Because while you can perform series of deadly and odd looking kicks while suspended, you don't get to use any of the ranged attacks and can just end up hanging there with your opponent patiently waiting for you to get back down or mauling you from afar with one projectile attack after another, taking their sweet sweet time with you, roasting you like a rotisserie chicken. Savage Warriors! Features replays, which is one of the more annoying ideas in fighters if you ask me, they interrupt the flow of the game and add very little, so you won't get to see any in this recording. They can be played at a much more attractive, more freely feeling camera angle though, and are a nice to some, even if unnecessary touch, to spice up the gameplay and give your fingers a second of a breather. Savage Warriors! Presentation is pretty nice. The backgrounds are beautifully hand painted, they look magnificent for the time and aged much better than some of the early 3D pre-rendered ones that other games used, and the gameplay is run entirely in high resolution SVGA which makes it sharp and pleasant to the eye. Sounds, while not world shattering, seem to be quite good and well fitting to the on-screen action. Controls are, well, they're not the worst I've seen, but not great either. There's no way to remap them though, so if you're not someone who gets easily accustomed to changes, they alone may make savage warriors unplayable to you. The enemy AI leave a bit to be desired, proving once more that versus fighters are best played, well, in versus against someone else. So if you have that someone, savage warriors may be worth a try, but I wouldn't go out of your way to track it down, it's not worth it. The Eye of the Typhoon may be the most obscure game in this whole video, as it never had an official western release and only ever came out in South Korea. It's a 2D one-on-one -on -one versus fighter with 12 playable characters and 2 in-game bosses. The characters are Hoya, who's the main hero of the game's storyline, Roy, a rugged western adventurer, Sori, who's Kunoichi, so a female ninja, the best kind of ninja I must add, Cho Hong, a female warrior, imagine Xena, but a budget version of her, Wang Chang, Chinese Mahjong player, cause as we all know Mahjong is the deadliest of all martial arts, Mui, a mysterious jungle warrior, Nelson, a gentleman fighting with a whip, so a definitive S on the SM scale, Tlaloc, who's an Aztec warrior, Dalma, old tiny fighter using a magical stick which just sounds all kinds of perverse, Musai Taro, a ninja, also known as Nat Kunoichi, Natasha, huge Russian female fighter, I heard that she wrestled a bear once and one, and Jarkil, a mask dancer, a man who misunderstood the meaning of dance battles when entering the tournament, and Powell is a sub-boss, with Mahesvara being the final opponent of the game and sporting two separate forms one female and one male. Pretty wide roster, over real tongue twisters of names. Each of the playable fighters have basic punches and kicks and their own unique special attacks. It's a pretty standard fare for the genre really, and while it's not bad in any shape or form, it's just not surprising in any way and feels rather generic. What is unusual about the Eye of the Typhoon though, about the Eye of Typhoon though, at least when it comes to fighting games on PC, is that it uses similar zooming effect to that in Art of Fighting on Neo Geo and in the arcades. So it zooms in and out of the camera depending on how close the opposing characters are from each other. Interestingly enough, there's also a taunt in the game, but there's no in-game mechanic attached to it, probably an oversight in development, and it has no use other than the aesthetic, and to leave you open for attacks obviously. So it's best to ignore it altogether. Together. The Eye of Typhoon can be played in single player, 1v1 or 2v2 modes and it's pretty fun. It's not good enough to challenge juggernauts of the genre like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo or Mortal Kombat, but it's plenty fun to stand on its own legs. Story-wise, many, 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 many years ago during the times of one of the Elden Eastern dynasties, a martial art known as the Eye of the Typhoon was very popular. As time went by, however, it was gradually less and less practiced and eventually entirely forgotten to the point of it becoming a myth among modern martial artists, a mystical technique that there was no proof of ever existing, like the aforementioned dancing or mahjong play. As western countries started practicing various fighting styles and perfecting them, the long forgotten style resurfaced somehow amidst it all and everyone jumped on the hype train to master the technique. Hence, the tournament was born to test the knowledge of best fighters from around the world in it. 
The plot as you see is super silly, but as in most games in a genre, it's also unimportant in the scope of what the game's all about. And if you're a fan of fighters, this one's definitely worth tracking down and playing. Time Warriors is a 3D versus fighting game that pits 8 fighters from different time periods and places of origin against each other. You could say that they're taken out of their time, that they're the, well, Time Warriors. The characters you can pick are Arvan the Celt, armed with a longsword, Hysis the Egyptian with two sabers, Moloch the Barbarian wielding his battle axe, Sultan Isbal, armed with scimitar, Shodan the Samurai, armed with a katana, all of the Viking wielding a warhammer, Spartan Apocles using double-edged sword and Chinese Dong with his staff. Now that I've said it, I realize it would have sounded much better if I said Dong the Chinese or Dong from China, but it's a bit late now and I'll leave it the way it is, so Chinese Dong, as opposed to European or Pan American Dong. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Time Warriors features 4 button controls, 2 for kicks and 2 for weapon attacks, and one set is fast and light, and the other slower but stronger. There are combos too, but they're not pre-baked as series of very specific combinations of key presses and are performed by repeating key presses fast or chaining of sequential moves. Some may find it annoying, not being able to memorize devastating combos and having to come up with your own, but I feel it's a better choice as it allows for a more in the moment reactive kind of comboing in response to the on-screen action. Action that there's very little in this game. I mean, you can see, right? Whenever you take damage, you gather magical points and when you have plenty enough of them, you can unleash a particularly devastating attack that can be a decisive factor whether you win or lose. While Time Warriors isn't particularly great looking, it's also not FX Fighter, so it sits somewhere between it and Virtua Fighter 2. Looking decent, but not great. Same could be said about the sound, sadly. They're there, they're fit, but that's all I can say about them really. Gameplay, however, I've few cents to say about it. It's utterly disappointing. The characters move as if they were trailing through mud, the controls, which are rather finicky, don't help either, and the moves and attacks are boring and uninspired, and for the life of me, I'm unable to perform any special attacks. It's as if the devs decided that going for the most generic feeling and badly controlling game was the right call to make. It wasn't, and Time Warriors remains largely unknown, deservedly so. So if you're not a hardcore fan of the genre, but they stick to something else, chances are that if it's not Shaq Fu, Rise of the Robots or Brutal Pulse of Fury, that what you land on will be a better game. Now, I'm first to admit that today's selection of B-listers is not great. I mean, sure, some of them are okay, there's one or two that are great, but the rest… well, most are mid. But, and that's nearly as important as excellent gameplay is, but they're all interesting. And it was fun talking about them. I hope that you enjoyed watching and listening about them too. Either way, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, hit those like and subscribe buttons below, and maybe share it too, it helps more than you know. If you didn't, then don't naturally. It was fun talking to you as usual, and I'll see you, or more accurately, talk to you very soon.